Good evening. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Mrs. Burns, uh, no, Pledge of Allegiance. Everybody please rise. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mrs. Um, Burns, roll call, please. Mrs. Hallenbeck? Present. Mr. Cerullo was absent with prior notice. Mr. Allen? Present. Mrs. Bowman? Here. <coughs> Mr. Kovitz? Here. Mrs. Lafferty is also absent with prior notice. Mr. Rodriguez? Here. Mr. Sporny? Here. And Mr. Sullivan? Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. The board met in executive session this evening prior to this meeting to discuss matters of employment, issues related to labor relations, the purchase or lease of real property, matters related to litigation, and matters related to school safety and security. Mrs. Burns, any announcements? No announcements. Mr. Bowman, superintendent's report. Thank you, Ms. Halbach. Uh, for the superintendent's report tonight, I am going to turn it over to Ms. Michelle Burkholder uh, to present some teacher, teacher recognition awards. Good evening. This evening, we're excited to bring back our teacher recognition awards that we um, have not presented since prior to COVID. Um, so we are thrilled to be able to announce um, six winners this evening. Um, the teacher recognition awards, um, there are four categories. Um, we have uh, two uh, Spirit of Nishamani awards going out this evening, two leadership awards, one community partnership award, as well as um, one innovation award. So we have four building principals to present those awards this evening. And obviously, um, we have a great audience. So I'm going to first uh, welcome Steve Garska at the high school. Do I have to hold the button? Or? No, OK. Good evening, everyone. Hope I... oh, there we go. Um, so when I first started in the Chamonix High School, I was uh, notified there's this plaque on the wall um, and it has these four columns, all these nice categories with teacher names that have been recognized for um, four different areas, innovation, leadership, spirit, and community service. And I kind of wondered how the process works. And one day we got an email asking for nominations and not being around uh, you know for a long time didn't really understand the process so I was fortunate that two of my teachers were nominated for awards and I had the opportunity to come over and speak uh, on their behalf to to try to get them recognized and I have two of them here tonight um, the first one I like to talk about is uh, Miss Bailey Scully Bailey, I want you to come on up uh, Bailey was nominated by her co-teacher, Ms. Kate Fleming, who's here tonight with all of this support that, that she has behind her. Pretty fantastic. Um, Ms. Fleming wrote in her nomination about how Bailey has breathed new life into her teaching and into her classroom. And that, to me, says a whole lot. And my understanding is that Bailey was in the FCS department last year and has moved into the special ed department. And when I walk into the special ed IPC, it's, it's alive in there. And part of what I've come to realize is a lot of that has to do with Bailey and the job that Bailey does every day and the spark that Bailey creates in that IPC, in her classroom and in our school. As far as leadership goes, I have had the opportunity to rely on Bailey for starting a number of programs, the biggest of which has been our e-hall pass program at Neshaminy High School, which has really streamlined when we have students in our hallways and all of the things that are going on uh, between classes or during classes when students are out on passes. So my ability to rely on someone who is so young in their career and is already demonstrating these strong leadership um, qualities is, is really amazing. And I was extremely happy when uh, we were able to 
choose Bailey for one of these awards. So it's my honor to present Ms. Bailey Scully with a leadership award. I don't know. There you go. Oh, I should. Uh, in addition to amazing leaders at Shamney High School, um, we also have uh, very spirited individuals. We have a, a ton of teachers who are Nishamini through and through, students at Nishamini back to teach, uh, second and third generation Nishamini families. Um, so it's, it's a real honor to get to present Mr. Sean D. Los Angeles with a Spirit of Nishamini Award tonight. DLA is uh, a, a teacher that I think students gravitate towards. Um, he's involved in so many things, um, track, uh, all three seasons. Uh, this year he has gotten more involved in gym night, um, which I think drew a lot more students into the program. Um, for example, tonight he told me that he was going to the middle school track uh, meet at Ben Salem and then rushing home to put his suit on and then getting his parents and coming here tonight to, to get this award. So um, DLA has always got a smile on his face. He is always interacting with students in a positive way. Uh, he was recognized as one of our Teachers of the Month earlier this year. Um, so it is absolutely my pleasure to present Mr. Sean D. Los Angeles with a Spirit of the Chamonix Award. Tim Hunt, principal of Equestrian Middle School. Uh, Mr. Garska was speaking a minute ago about, about Nishamini and about coming into the high school and seeing um, all, all the history that goes along with us as a district. I myself am lucky enough to have been a lifelong member of the Nishamini family, uh, riding the bus from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade and finishing up coming back to work at uh, several of the buildings in the district. I, I get to see how Nishamini is a total community. We are a true family. At Bequesting, we have a member of our faculty who, who takes and just embodies the community spirit with everything that she does. I'd like to call Miss Mann, Miss Jennifer Mann, up to the podium right now, please. The, the, true, the true testimony to any, uh, any educator is the, uh, the empowering words that are picked up by their students. Um, tonight, I have brought with me the National Junior Honor Society President, uh, Mr. Promis Adebayo, to say a few words about Ms. Mann. Promise? Yeah. Okay. Don Tyler's commitment to volunteerism, community service, and civil engagement, Ms. Mann has become a, a respected leader in advocating for children and family by collaborating with stakeholders from homes, schools, and wider communities. She has spearheaded multiple efforts to reform and improve critical services that directly impact the well-being of those in need. Ms. Mann has specifically helped org organize community efforts to block to bring local businesses, national service organization, and local authority, and the Pequesting Middle School community together to assist their, those exper experiencing food and non-financial insecurities. Additionally, she introduced the sacrifice to made, made by our, by, made by our, our national veterans to a new generation of students, along with 
the need to support and continually assist in the con con connecting of our Asian veterans to to needed resource. Most recently, Ms. Man mobilized a group of students leaders to organize, plan, and beautify the community through various cleanup and paint, painting effort. The list of events that she has initially that connect to our community goes on and on. And, and it does go on and on. Miss Man, with every breath that she takes, uh, just helps to continually grow our community. And we are so proud to have her with us at Bequesting. Um, the students that she works with look up to her. Mr. Adebayo here volunteered to come. He was thrilled today to be here to help recognize Miss Mann for all that she does for not only the uh, Bequesting community, but for the entire Nishamity family. So once again, Miss Mann, we are honored. We are privileged to have you tonight with us. And we, we thank you for all that you do. And we look forward to seeing what you do next. Thank you so much. Good evening. Uh, I'm Mike Cochran. I'm the assistant principal at Bequesting. Um, so I'm here tonight to talk about Miss Lesser, Miss Brooke Lesser, if you want to come on up, for our Bequesting Spirit of Nishamini Award. So Mr. Gartska mentioned in the Spirit of Nishamini Award how fortunate we are to have generational people in Nishamini. I'm, I'm like Mr. Hunt said, I'm one who's come the full circle. I've been here my whole life. My kids are in the district. I teach in the district. I've, I've worked through here. And I've never seen anyone who is as positive and powerful in their approach as Miss Lesser is. Um, just to read an excerpt here. Um, her dedication to staying informed and incorporating new and effective strategies into her teaching methods sets her apart as a leader in education and further exemplifies her commitment to excellence. The things that she does with our phys ed students to keep them engaged, to modify and change so that every student has access and inclusiveness in the, in the, in the gym and while they're with her, um, it's amazing. Every time I walk by, I'm like, oh my god, where did you come up with this fresh new, like seriously, there's constant fresh new things and they're wonderful. The kids are engaged and she leads from the front absolutely every day. If they're dancing, she's dancing with them. If they're on scooters with some gigantic ball bouncing it across the room, which was amazing. Uh, she's out there showing them the way. Um, Brooke has truly made a lasting impact on the lives of those around her. Uh, it, is, it is that dedication, that willingness to make us and our students face our fears and learn growth through that, um, that is helping change and embody the, the mission of Nishamini to empower our students to become the next generation uh, of productive citizens. So for that, thank you, Brooke, for being a role model and inspiration for us all and in truly embodying the spirit of Nishamini. There we go. I'm Brian Kern, principal at Pearl Buck Elementary, and I am here to present the Innovation Award. And before I announce uh, the teacher who's receiving this award, um, if you've ever been in his classroom, I think the, <clears throat> excuse me, the first thing you'll notice is that it's just comfortable. And his comfort with the students in terms of how he makes them feel is presented and also the things that he does outside of the classroom to bring into the classroom. For example, 
he made uh, maglev tracks from when the, they were doing a, the study of magnets in the fourth grade curriculum. That project caught on quickly within his team, and that was across the district. So that's one reason he's highly qualified to be the Innovation Award winner. He created um, these dinosaur, what do you call them? Motivational dinosaurs. And these motivational dinosaurs are in this, in this boxing ring kind of a thing that he brought out during March Madness. To just keep kids motivated, have some fun, help manage the classroom behaviors. And uh, they still exist in the classroom uh, at this point. And, and they're just fun. He had all kinds of little tags that he put on. And um, they could earn points. They could buy things. It was, uh, it's pretty crazy. It was very cool. Uh, but pretty crazy. Um, and so he does all this on, on his own time with his own work, uh, his own wood, his own, at his own uh, home workshop. He, um, let's see, what else does he do? Oh, um, he is just really recognized within our school as someone who just really goes out of his way to make the kids feel comfortable and really learn in a different manner. So I'd like to present uh, Patrick Spiro, who is uh, our fourth grade teacher. Good evening, Tripodolis Principal at Walter Miller Elementary. I'm here to present the Leadership Award for a third grade teacher at Walter Miller Elementary. I've been there for seven years, and I can say from the first day I've been there, this person has been positive and exemplifies leadership every day um, from working with her parents and communicating and collaborating with her colleagues. Um, she was recommended by a colleague that is actually, Kathy was a mentor for. Um, so I'm here to provide Kathy Alford with the Leadership Award. And, and Kathy, if you ever go into her classroom, not only is she a mentor, but a curriculum specialist, and um, her students lead themselves. So when you walk in, you know, Kathy's facilitating learning that the students are actually so engaged that they're all working in. So um, great job. And with data, Kathy's always um, uplifting everybody, empowering them, and helping them with data. So um, that's why she was recommended by her team. So thank you. We'll just give it a minute. Congratulations to all of the teachers. Mrs. Burns, is there anybody signed up for public comment? Yes, Susan Suter.
Yes, you please come forward to the fight. Please state your name, area you reside, and no personal attacks. You have three minutes. Thank you. Okay, good evening. My name is Susan Souter. I'm an instructional assistant at Neshaminy High School. I started working at Neshaminy in 2004. I work five and three quarter hours a day because if you work six hours, they have to pay you benefits. I figured I would work my way up to a full-time position. Then the school district started outsourcing positions and changing full-time positions to part-time positions when the current employees left or retired. Co-taught classes used to have two teachers now they have a teacher and an instructional assistant. This change should be saving the school district more than enough money to make instructional assistants full-time and to pay for their benefits. I was recently able to temporarily move into a full-time position while someone was on medical leave. During this two-month period, I was able to pay $142 for um, my medical benefits instead of $925 that I normally pay each month. $251 of this monthly fee goes towards a prescription plan that I have to purchase even though I don't take any prescriptions. When I just returned to my previous position yesterday, I was so happy to hear how excited and happy the students were to have me back. One boy told me that now that I was back to help him, he might be able to pass math. Then, I was also told by the teachers and students that the outsourced person who has been in my position sat in the back of the room on her phone and did not help the students. But the school district will end up continuing to pay this outsourced employee because the district can't get people based on the wages and benefits that they are offering. I think our students deserve better and I think good employees deserve full-time positions with benefits. Since December, Four instructional assistants have left the high school to get jobs that pay benefits. We are losing good employees. Please don't lose any more. I love my job. I love working with the Nishamani students. You know, I'll come in early in the morning to help tutor students and all, but I'm going to have to look for a job at another school district if Nishamani can't offer full-time positions. It's heartbreaking that Neshamni can spend millions of dollars redoing athletic fields, but they can't offer good employees full-time positions. I mean, I know as a school board and all, you have a balance, a budget that you have to balance and all, but it's, it's really tough being an employee. I've been an employee for almost 20 years here, and I, I can't get a full-time position. Thank you for listening. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else? Okay. I'm going to make a motion for um, two routine matters, 2.01 minutes, 2.02 treasurer's report, 2.03 check register and procurement card purchases, 2.04 budget transfers, 2.05 bids, 2.06 investments, and 2.07 exonerations. There's a motion on the floor. May I have a second, please? Second. Second by Mr. Sullivan. Any questions, comments, or concerns? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Vote passes 7-0. Personnel, Mr. Sullivan, please. Personnel, I'm going to make a master motion, but before I do, I'd like to point out that we have a retirement person, Kimberly Pfaff, who's retiring with 20.4 years. I'd like to make a master motion to approve item 3.01, retirements, resignations, and assignments. 3.02, appointments. 3.03, leaves of absence. 3.04, revised leaves of absence. 3.05 co-curricular appointments, 3.06 ancillary appointments. There's a motion on the floor. May I have a second, please? Second. Second by Mr. Allen. Any questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. 
Vote passes 7-0. Uh, personnel support, I too will be making a master motion for some of this. But first, I'd like to rec um, recognize some retirements. Deborah Krovac, 28.7 years. Kathleen Clark with 30 years. And Mary Kimmermer with 23.7 years. Thank you for your dedication to Nishamani. Master motion for 4.01 retirements, resignations, end of assignments. 4.02, 4.03, leaves of absence, 4.04, revised leaves of absence, 4.05, ancillary appointments. There's a motion on the floor. May I have a second, please? Second. Second by Mr. Rodriguez. Any questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Vote passes 7-0. 4.06, Ms. Bowman, please. I'd like to make a motion. 4.06, instructional, instructional aids training days. Whereas the Nishamani School District has a collective bargaining agreement with the Nishamani Education Support Professional Association through June 30th, 2027. And whereas Article 1, Section 5, of the agreement permits the district certain managerial rights and whereas the district has a need for the instructional aides to receive certain trainings unique to their positions as it relates to dealing with children to children with students who have ieps and there is also a need for the instructional aides to receive security training so that expectations are clear on what to do for themselves and their students in the event of an emergency now, therefore, be it resolved that the Nishamani Board of School Directors here appro hereby approves the adding three additional days to the instructional aids calendar for 2023-2024 school year. Thank you, Mrs. Bowman. There's a motion on the floor. May I have a second, please? Second. Second by Mr. Kovitz. Any questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor? I abstentions vote passes seven zero. Four point zero seven, Mr. Allen, please. Thank you, Ms. Hollenbeck. Four point oh seven skilled labor wage adjustment. Whereas the Nishamani School District has a collective bargaining agreement with the Nishamani Education Support Professional Association through June thirtieth, twenty twenty seven. And whereas Article 7, Section 5-1 of the agreement permits the association and the district to put forth committees to discuss possible wage discrepancies based on market conditions, and whereas the committees for the district have met to discuss the need for wage increases to skilled trades and diesel mechanics to attract and retain qualified employees. <clears throat> now, therefore, be it resolved that the Nishamani Board of School Directors hereby approves the committee's recommendation that the following wage increases be approved as follows. And a table follows with the job classifications. I'd like to make that motion. Thank you, Mr. Allen. There's a motion on the floor. May I have a second, please? Second. Second by Mr. Sullivan. Any questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Vote passes 7-0. 4.08. Mr. Kovitz, please. I'd like to make a motion to approve 4.08 instructional aid and groundskeeper wage adjustment. Whereas the Nishamani School District has a collective bargaining agreement with the Nishamani Education Support Professional Association through June 30th, 2027. And whereas Article 7, Section 5.1 of the agreement permits the association and the district to put forth committees to discuss possible wage discrepancies based on market conditions. And whereas the committees for the district have met to discuss the need for wage increases to special education, instructional aides, and groundskeepers to attract and retain qualified employees. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Nishamani Board of School Directors hereby approves the committee's recommendation 
that the following wage increases be approved as follows. And there is a table there. Thank you, Mr. Kovitz. There's a motion on the floor. May I have a second, please? Second. second by Mr. Rodriguez. Any questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Vote passes 7-0. Mr. Sporney, please. Sure, I'd like to make a motion 5.01 annual appointments for 2023-24, whereas the Neshaminy Board of School Directors is required to make annual appointments due to state and federal mandates. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors hereby approves the annual, annual appointments noted below for SY 2023-24, and there's a table with a column of staff titles and staff members. Thank you, Mr. Sporny. There's a motion on the floor. May I have a second, please? Second. Second by Mr. Allen. Any questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Vote passes 7-0. 5.02, 2023-2024, proposed final budget. Whereas 24 PS 6 687 of the Pennsylvania Public School Code requires that the Board of School Directors prepare a proposed final budget at least 30 days prior to the adoption of the final budget and to make the proposed final budget available for public inspection at least 20 days prior to the date set forth for the adoption of the final budget. And whereas 24 PS 6 dash 687 of the Pennsylvania Public School Code requires that the president of the Board of School Directors certify to the Pennsylvania Department of Education that the proposed final budget was prepared, presented, and made available for public inspection using the uniform form furnished by the Department of Education. And whereas the Board of School Directors has the 2023-2024 proposed final budget of the school district in the required form and desire that the same be made available for public inspection as required by law. And whereas the total revenues equal $198,780,467 and expenditures of $203,063,854 and the millage rate equals 171.23 meaning that there is no tax increase included in this proposed final budget for the 2023-2024 year, thus using $4,283,387 from the fund balance. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Neshaminy School Board of Directors hereby adopts the attached 2023-2024 proposed final budget presented at this May 23rd, 2023 public meeting and the same shall be made available for public inspection and be made available for duplication to any person on request beginning on May 24th, 2023. And that the president of the board of school directors is authorized to issue the certification of the Pennsylvania Department of Education required by 24 PS 6-687. Be it further resolved that the board of school directors will adopt the 2023-2024 final budget of the school district at the public meeting to be held on June 27th, 2023. And the proposed final budget is attached. There's a motion on the floor. May I have a second, please? Seconded by Mr. Rodriguez. Any questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Vote passes 7-0. Mr. Rodriguez, can you please read 5.03? I'd like to make a motion 5.03 2023 Homestead and Farmstead Exclusion. Be it resolved that the Nishamni's Board of School Directors hereby approves the attached Homestead and Farmstead Exclusion resolution that authorizes a real estate tax assessment reduction for the school year beginning July 1st, 2023 under the provisions of the Homestead Property Exclusion Program Act part of Act 50 of 1998 and the Taxpayer Relief Act, Act 1 of 2006. Files attached. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. There's a motion on the floor. May I have a second, please? Second. 
Second by Mr. Kovitz. Any questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Vote passes 7-0. I am going to make a master motion for 5.04 summer work projects approval. 5.05 appointment of treasurer. 5.07 for facility and energy usage fees, 5.08 depositories of school funds, 5.09 competitive electronic auction bidding, 5.10 cooperative purchasing agreements, 5.11 breakfast lunch pricing, 5.12 newspapers of record, 5.13 petty cash accounts, 5.14 procurement card use. There's a motion on the floor. May I have a second, please? Second. second by Mr. Sullivan. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Just one, Ms. Ron 5.11 uh, reflects no changes. Is that correct? That is correct, Mr. Allen. No, there, are no, there are no increases to the uh, mill prices for students uh, for the 23-24 school year. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Irwin. Anybody else have any questions? There's been a motion on the floor and a second by Mr. Sullivan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Vote passes 7-0. Mr. Sullivan, 5.06, please. 5.06 contracted services for 2023-2024 resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors hereby approves the contractual agreement and service relationships with the following companies and individuals for 2023-2024 school year and there's a number of providers listed there. Thank you Mr. Sullivan. There's been a motion on the floor. May I have a second please? Second. Second by Mr. Kovitz. Any questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Vote passes 7-0. Mr. Sullivan, 5.15, please. 5.15, Taxpayer Bill of Rights. Resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors hereby approves the adoption of the Neshaminy School District Taxpayer Bill of Rights for 2023-2024 in accordance with Board Policy 621, and there's files attached. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. There's a motion on the floor. I will actually second that. Is there any questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Vote passes 7-0. Mr. Kovitz, 5.16, please. I'd like to make a motion to, uh, for a 5.16 Aramark Food Services Contract. Whereas the April 27th, 2021 Board of School Directors meeting, at the meeting, the school district entered into a food service cost reimbursement contract for a period of one year on July 1st, 2021 and ending June 30th, 2022, with up to four one-year renewals upon mutual agreement between the school district and Aramark Educational Services, LLC. And whereas the school district wishes to renew the food service cost reimbursable contract for a period of one year beginning on July 1st, 2023 and ending on June 30th, 2024 with up to one year renewal upon mutual agreement between the school district and Aramark Educational Services, LLC. And the contract shall contain the terms, provisions and conditions set forth in the contract of Aramark Educational Services, LLC in which the guaranteed surplus return to the school district shall be $105,835.95. And the management fee to Aramark Educational Services, LLC, shall be $134,060.55. And whereas Aramark Educational Services, LLC, shall comply with the laws, rules, regulations, policies, and instructions of Pennsylvania Department of Education, United States Department of Ag Agriculture, and the applicable laws of the United States and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and any additions or amendments thereto, including but not limited to Title VII CFR Parts 
215, 220, 245, 250, 3017, and 3018. Title II CFR Part 200 and Title VII CFR Parts 225 SFSP and 226 CAC FP as applicable. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the President, Vice President, Secretary, Treasurer, and Solicitor of the School District are hereby authorized and directed on behalf of the School District and under its corporate seal to execute the contract as approved by the Solicitor and other such other documents and affidavits and to take care of such further action as may be required by law and necessary or desirable to effectuate the aforesaid food service cost reimbursable contract for 2023 to, through 2024 and the intent of this resolution. And there's some attachments. Thank you, Mr. Kovitz. <laughs> I know some of them are tongue tires, aren't they? <laughs> There's been a motion on the floor. May I have a second, please? Second. Second by Mr. Allen. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Yeah, I'd like to ask Mr. Kovitz to read that again just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Vote passes 7-0. 5.17 reorganization of the facilities department whereas the district has a four million deficit for the 2023-2024 school year and whereas the district is seeking to reorganize the facilities department in order to streamline operations and effectiveness and whereas the elimination of the positions of facility supervisor and Director of Facilities and Operations and creating one position with the title of District Engineer would accomplish an economic benefit budgetary savings to the district. And whereas the new position of District Engineer would be at a rate of blank. And whereas the district has met the obligation to meet and discuss the elimination of the two positions and creation of the new position with both Nishamani Administrative Support Association and the Nishamani School District Administrators Association. And now therefore be it resolved that the position of facility supervisor and director of facilities and operations be eliminated and the creation of the district engineer be created. There's been a motion on the floor. May I have a second, please? Second. Second by Mr. Sullivan. Any questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Vote passes 7-0. Mr. Allen, 5.18, please. Thank you, Ms. Hollenbeck. <clears throat> I'd like to put a motion on the floor, 5.18, the reorganization of the Transportation Department. Whereas the district has a $4 million deficit for the 2023 through 2024 school year, and whereas the district is seeking to reorganize the transportation department in order to streamline operations and effectiveness, and whereas the elimination of the positions of fleet supervisor and transportation supervisor and creating one position with the title of transportation manager would accomplish an economic benefit, budgetary savings to the district, and whereas the new position of transportation manager would be at a rate of 93,000 based on the pay rate of the existing Act 93 agreement, and whereas the district has met the obligation to meet and discuss the elimination of the two positions and creation of the new position with the Nishamity Administrative Support Association. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the positions of fleet supervisor and transportation supervisor be eliminated and the creation of the transportation manager be created. Thank you, Mr. Allen. There's a motion on the floor. May I have a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Rodriguez. Any questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Vote passes 7-0. 5.19, Mr. Sullivan. 0.19, Gilmore and Associates, change order number five, 
Extended Construction Administrative Phase, Project Number 21-02072-01. Whereas the Neshaminy Board of School Directors approved and hired an architect and construction management company for the new elementary school on the Maple Point campus, and whereas in any construction project there may be change orders which need to be approved, now therefore it be resolved that the Neshaminy School District authorizes the District Business Administrator to authorize the attached change order with Gilmore and Associates Inc. with their revised date of April 24, 2023, subject to review, revisions if necessary, and approved by the district solicitor in an amount not to exceed $34,200, and there's a file attachment. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. There's a motion on the floor. May I have a second, please? I'll sec uh, second by Mr. Allen. Any questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Vote passes 7-0. Mr. Allen, 5.20. Thank you, Ms. Hollenbeck. I'd like to place a motion <clears throat> on the table. Oh. I'd like to place a motion on the floor. 5.20 Bucks County Technical High School budget for the 2023 through 2024 school year, whereas in order to provide technical high school education for our students, six Lower Bucks County School Districts cooperatively established the Bucks County Technical High School, and whereas each participating school district must annually vote on the technical high school's annual budget. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors hereby approves the 2023 through 2024 Bucks County Technical High School budget in the total amount of $32,854,140 as operating budget of $30,958,569 with the Neshaminy School District 2023 through 2024 net fiscal payment to be $5,304,333. Thank you, Mr. Allen. There's been a motion on the floor. May I have a second, please? Second. Seconded by Mr. Kovitz. Any questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor? It's a roll. Thank you. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Bowman? Yes. Mrs. Hallenbeck? Yes. Mr. Kovitz? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Sporny? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Seven yes. Thank you. Ms. Bowman? I'd like to make a motion, 6.01, Student Settlement Agreements, whereas the Neshaminy School District has outlined private and confidential agreements with the families of student number 7XXXX9 and number 7 XXXX2. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors hereby approves providing the educational programming as specified in said agreements. Thank you, Mrs. Bowman. There's a motion on the floor. May I have a second, please? Second. Seconded by Mr. Rodriguez. Any questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? abstentions vote passes seven zero back to you mrs bowman i'd like to make a motion 6.02 homebound instruction whereas the neshaminy school district desires to provide educational services to meet the needs of students requiring homebound instruction now therefore be it resolved that the neshaminy board of school directors hereby approves the homebound instruction below and there are two list two um, students listed Thank you, Mrs. Bowman. There's a motion on the floor. I will second that. Any questions or comments or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Vote passes 7-0. That brings us to the closing of the meeting. Is there any other board business that anybody would like to bring up? 
Second public comment. If anybody would like to make a comment, please um, approach the podium. You have three minutes. Everybody's running. Um, that brings us to board comment. Does anybody have any board comment they'd like to make? Mr. Allen. Thank you, Ms. Hollenbeck. Uh, first, I'd like to thank all of our award recipients tonight. It's uh, quite an impressive group from our staff and our faculty, and I want to thank them for their dedication to our students because all that we do here, all the budgetary, all the commentary we have, it's all about our students, and uh, that's where it starts in the classroom, and it's just fantastic to, to hear, especially the, the uh, student who came up spoke so highly of his teacher. That's, that's just fantastic. Um, so again, I want to thank them. Um, and our retirees, because uh, your years of dedication in the Nishamity community, it does not go unnoticed. Um, and we uh, greatly appreciate your time and effort you put in, again, for our students and the community. The tech budget, uh, thank you once again to the Nishamity School Board. Um, Mr. Kovitz and I, you know, uh, worked very hard over there. Uh, not to pat ourselves in the back, I'm just saying. It, it's a difficult room. Uh, there's, it's not, we're not all on the same page over there. Everyone in districts have their own, um, you know, their own take on, uh, well, on the financial end of it for the most part. And um, it, it can be difficult to come up with a budget that we're all satisfied with and keeps everyone happy. Um, I'm just glad that Nishamity continues to support the uh, tech program. Um, there's, as I've said a number of times, the uh, skilled labor, um, we need it. it. It's those, there's a, there's a need for, and the, and the uh, professional services that go on over there, the nursing and, and um, in the uh, EMT division there, we, we need them in our community. And quite frankly, for a number of years, students were steered in other directions away from that. I see that uh, it's somewhat turning back and I think we all understand that there needs to be an equivalency. Some, some students are better suited for those kind of trades. And uh, the tech school does a fantastic, job of preparing those students for for life in the community and in, in the in our nation as a whole so again thank you to the board for for uh, agreeing to continue to support our presence over in the tech school and last but not least at all weird to say happy memorial day but memorial day is coming up and uh, uh you know it, it's a time that we Remember those who have uh, given the ultimate sacrifice to our to our nation and uh, among all the preps for the beginning of summer the barbecues It's nice to be able to uh, you know take a thought aside to remember that sacrifice and that's it. Thank you Thank you, mr. Allen is anybody else have board comment mr. Kovitz So I just wanted to pig, piggyback on one or two things. Uh, mr. Allen said um, uh both as a uh, teacher at a technical high school, as a um, as someone who sits on the board of another technical high school, um, you know, the, it's it. Not only are, are the trades important. Not only do our kids deserve to have that uh, that continue. But I think something else, a really important service that technical trade high schools provide to the community is career and technical education. It's, it's career prep. It's, um, I became a teacher because uh, of my years in industry. I've had colleagues tell me time and time again that complaining about the kids of today, they can't do this, they can't do that, they don't do this, they don't do that. And, um, and when I would ask them, what can they do? I never got a sufficient answer. And uh, it was then I felt like I was part of that solution. And it has become like a, a mission in my life. So I, so I take that kind of stuff very seriously. And um, we provide a really necessary um, service to the community and to these kids that deserve to become, you know, 
to, they're today's students, but they're tomorrow's professionals. Whether they have a degree or not, that's irrelevant. Uh, they, there's so many things that they do, we often take those folks for granted. So, um, so thank you again uh, for supporting that. Um, and just, uh, I appreciate the last comment as well about Memorial Day. Um, being the father of a son who's in the, the service, uh, that, that always is, is, is appreciative. So, uh, I'm son in the National Guard. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kovitz. Anybody else wanted to make a word comment? Um, I just have a couple of quick comments. Uh, congratulations again to all of the teachers that received their awards tonight. With all the teachers that we have in the district, it's w very well deserved for those. So thank you again for your dedication to Nishamini. Um, the budget. So we did approve the proposed final budget tonight and it's currently over $203 million. With a deficit of $4 million, there is only so much revenue to go around, so we do have to be creative in what we're looking to do and how we're going to manage the budget. I am happy to say we were able to increase the salaries for certain positions um, that we've been trying to get done for a while, so I'm happy to say that we were able to do that as well. Um, and that is all I have. So with that, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Seconded by Mr. Sullivan. Everybody have a great night. Thank you.